um, when I sold my house and, and, and everything that I, ha that I got and I left back to Israel in Hay Besivan I landed in Ben Gurion Airport planning to get the Torah uh, in Israel and um, in, in, in uh, uh, Shavuot holiday it was the eve of Shavuot I didn't even realize that when I landed and when my mother and my stepfather came to see me and to pick me up and, and they saw me and they were very surprised to see how I look like because I was with the long hair not exactly telling you all the details because really I decided to clean myself spiritually and I, I and I decide to become a nozil and uh, the Satmel Rabbi in that community guided me how to do it and what to study and I was studying uh, uh, Mishnah of Nazir and, and the Halacha of Nazir and I was studying also uh, the Gemara of, of uh, 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 Nazir you know, every, everything that that belonged to the subject I was studying to know exactly what am I supposed to, to do as a Nazir uh, uh, the Gemara that belonged to the Nazir, uh, Nazir uh, or the portion of it and, and basically uh, <coughs> I came here to Israel as a Nazir with a long uh, beard and uh, long hair and, and, and uh, I was looking a little weird because I found, I found out that if I'm not going to really uh, do something that will give me strength to live uh, the way of living in, in, in the States, then I will find myself in the pubs and the bars again. And I was trying to separate myself from the, uh, the Gentile society and uh, the uh, secular society uh, in, in uh, Israeli um, uh, uh, people to not to be drawn by them back to the pubs and bars on Shabbat and and was really trying to keep Shabbat in the way I knew I, and I didn't know much but I was trying my best and trying to be more attached with the rabbi and, and to take his guidance and, and it was a big fight. It was not as easy as I'm describing. It was a big fight inside me, a big conflict. And because uh, I, I, I had many friends and I really could fly with <laughs> with my, my emotions and, and, and really try to... But I knew that their influence will be bad uh, at me and I really had to really give a good fight to do some ma major changes in my life. So when I landed in Israel, I was with a long hair. My, my mother was surprised to see me with a long beard. And, 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 and basically, uh, I, we drove back home. She couldn't even, you know, she didn't know how to, what to ask me. Um, and then she asked how was the flight and, and slowly uh, uh, we started to have a more more of a reasonable conversation I started to study in Israel at my grandfather's synagogue in Ofakim it's in a, a little settlement nearby Be'er Sheva um, it's a little let's say a uh, little city in, in, in the south of Israel and uh, my, my mother was so afraid that I will run back to America that she, when I came home, I, it was a big surprise to me, she built she knew that I'm coming because I told her my plan and I'm planning to come and she was able in a few months to build little house 
uh, in the backyard of her house very nice unit uh, to me for me so I will not run back to to the states so I will live nearby her and she 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 even spend a lot of money to make a nice you know a, a garden and 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 with uh, nice plants and, and, and lights and with uh, colorful lights uh, so everything will look maybe uh, similar to what she saw but it was very far uh, uh, from what I used to live in the States but it doesn't really matter because I was back when I when I came here I came for one reason for one reason I came I came to basically um, worship God, and I came as a Nazio, and I came by after losing my 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 my, my intention, my inclination for material the materialistic life, and I came here and I realized that people cannot make it if they don't do it for the right purpose. Uh, in, I mean. There is many people that are coming with uh, coming to Israel to get a uh, sal uh, and 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 uh, to make an aliyah to get some benefits. But I uh, I don't know how how long they can stay and 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 how how Jewish they can be by doing such a thing. But I really came for um, for 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 the tshuva reason for the right reason. And um, I was studying in the I was studying in the synagogue of my grandfather. I was studying along uh, on my own, and and um, I was putting it to feeling all day long. And I was crying and studying, and and I asked God to guide me here in Israel. Who are the people that I should uh, where where are the people and who are the right people because there is many many different kind of you know, branches and 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 ashkofe and, and and ways but i and and i got i got a very very good ashgacha and god guided me here in israel and um i just want you to know that after being uh, for uh, two years here in Israel in uh, Nazir, then I, uh, Rabbi Eliashev, Zechel Tzadik Livracha, he found a way how to um, to take uh, uh, the nether, uh, that uh, um, uh, he, he found a way how to uh, um, allow me the nether, and basically um, I stuff to become a, to to be a Nazir Nazir and I started to study in Jerusalem. Uh, and basically in Shabbat Khatan something very special occur. Uh, very special occur. I invited many, many people for Shabbat Khatan right after the marriage. And um very important people. But the Gabai of uh, the synagogue. Um, he, he was a little drunk somehow, he, and he didn't pay attention to the fact that I'm supposed to that I'm supposed to um, to take to get an aliyah of uh, shishi, the, the most important aliyah uh, to the chatan, and he gave it to someone else somehow. I don't know why he done it but probably uh, he, he didn't pay attention to I don't know or he promised to somebody else uh, last, a week before I don't know what and, and the other person started to bless and, and he already say the name of God he, he, he said the blessing and, and I was sitting there embarrassed don't know in my seat and, and all the people started to stare on one another and they saw they realized that I'm a Chatan, didn't get an Aliyah, and uh, then he, they, they told him, and he, and he ran toward me, and he told me, 
I'm sorry, but I, I'm, I'm I was confused. I'm a little sick, and, and you know, and I and I and I smelled the the alcohol, and I, and I told him, oh, it doesn't really matter. I will get an aliyah in Mincha. It was, uh, and they told me, no, 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 no. You know what? You go. Uh, you take the aftara. Aftara, and then I told him I don't know Aftara. I, I'm I'm a bal tshuva, bal tshuva. I didn't even prepare myself. I don't know. It's a, it's a very special, uh, you know, um, training to 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 know the the reading of the Aftara. And he told me, don't worry, uh, the Chazan and me, we will stand uh, on your left and your right, and we're gonna whisper to you, and you're gonna repeat right after us and um, I, I saw him turning red waiting for uh, an answer and I and I decided not to insult him and I told him okay okay and when the time 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 come and I stood for the Aftara and and a lot of important people was there and uh, it came from Jerusalem to my Shabbat Chatan and I was very embarrassed I am not prepared to the Aftara and 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 he they started to to whisper when when I opened the aftara I realized that I know the aftara. I was at the age of thirty five, but if you uh, were listening to the entire story, uh, then you probably remember that uh, when I was young, at the age of uh, eight eight thir- eight thirty. Eight and a half. Then my father uh, taught me an aftara, and he died a year after from heart attack. And it was um, I was young, and I didn't understand why he's insisting on Roni Akara Loyalada is that same aftara. It was not even my my bar mitzvah aftara. But then when I when I uh, when I opened the aftara. Was parashat ki tetze, and I and I saw the aftara roni akara lo yalada, and I my eyes become wet. I start to tear, and I realize the ashgacha that basically my father trained me many many years ago. He died. He he's not here in my Shabbat Chatan, but he prepared me. To my Shabbat Chatan, many many years ago, by uh, by Hashgacha, Hashgacha Pratit. I I'm married now. I'm with uh, seven kids. I studying Rabbanut, and uh, afterward uh, Sam Dayanut for five more years, and I'm lecturing here in Israel, in the military, in the Air Force, in many many other places uh, in. In, in the tshuva movements, and basically, I was sharing with you my personal story to tell you how much hashgacha a Jewish one Jew's soul can have when God are actually talking with us. He have His own language. We don't have to really wait for a call and to hear it in our ears, our materialistic ears. But if we pay attention. To the events in our life, basically God are turning many, many red lights and guiding us just like He guided, like like uh, um, um, uh, right upon landing. Uh, there is a, a lot of uh, uh, lights and 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 uh, uh, Morse codes and and uh, instruction from the ground control to the pilot. I was. I realized that basically God are really trying to have all the signs and all the stop signs or or other signs to to make us think and to show us and to speak with any anyone with his own language but he must believe pay attention and open his spiritual eyes and start to use his spiritual way of thinking to be able to really see through Selam Elohim that he got inside his 
that buried inside his body and, and to allow him to raise erect from his own body and to start start to live according to Tzalem Elohim uh, image of God that he have inside him and um, by that probably um, we can we can see another dimension uh, in life and uh, even our emotion that really um, abounded with the materialistic life can be it can be used for the other dimension to love the infinitive power of God to love the the unconditional love of God and 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 to be really unite uh, with the spiritual world and have some emotions not only um, a love of a materialistic kind of love that we have in our uh, materialistic life and concepts um, we gonna listen to uh, some music and then uh, go we're here again and we'll continue with our uh, radio program I just want you to uh, be aware that uh, next week um, from 11 p.m. in Motzei Shabbos till 1 o'clock then we're going to start with a theological um, a lecture and we're going to start with Hosea 53 it's a chapter in, in the Bible that uh, basically all the uh, all the uh, Christian people are you know doing sure and all the missionaries are sure that if you're just gonna read through it and then you automatically will become uh, a Christian somehow they, that's what they, they they think that's what they claim and they put it in the bumper stickers and and t-shirts and and all over the place and uh, basically that have no um, no right because that's not even they don't they take the chapter out of context in in, in the book and and basically uh, the entire uh, perush the translation that they give to the chapter it's uh, totally totally wrong and we'll go over it bezrat hashem next week uh, Ozea 52 and Daniel 9 and uh, that they used to also claim that they have uh, their, their own translation but I want you to know that um, the academic world does not consider uh, the Christian uh, translation to the Bible or all the proofs that they're trying to uh, hold to from the Bible to their uh, to their uh, religion, um, they don't consider it as a, a serious matter. They even make a laugh out of it because uh, it's totally out of context, and um, they have uh, they they shape it the way they like, and um, uh, and basically um, the real uh, translation is uh, being um, avoided or uh, uh, or uh, basically uh, misunderstood so um, we'll go over it next week but I want to tell you a little, little story um, this week and to end with my personal story that I told you about the power of prayer and about the power of the Ashgacha as you um, just heard and um, to tell you that a few months ago it's another story of Ashgacha Rabbi uh, Yaakov Ades here in Jerusalem uh, called me and he told me to come over to his place and um, when I came to Yeshivat Nahar Shalom to speak with him and to see what exactly 
the big rabbi wants from me uh, a, a little person, little one. <laughs> Uh, then I, he, he introduced himself to me, and he, he wants to give me uh, all the books that he wrote, and it's uh, 40 books. I didn't came came with a truck, so I couldn't really pick them up. But so he gave me a disc, a CD with all these books, and I took it, and he told me we got to know uh, one another, and I uh, I was very happy to. Uh, to hear that, but I didn't know what his purpose for, uh, what 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 for, and why he's calling me uh, specifically. And then he told me that he wrote a book called Pirke Machshava, uh, chapter of uh, thinking, and that's the name of the book. And his book was translated to Italian uh, in a sixteen hundred copies. And one of the copies was sent to the Vatican, and um, he told me that Benedictus the Sixteenth, before he resigned from his uh, uh, from his uh, position as a pope in in, in Rome, uh, he read the book, and then Rabbi uh, Yaakov Ades uh, told me that he got a letter from the Pope from the Vatican, from Benedictus the Sixteenth, telling him that he is very impressed with the book. And I asked I asked the Rabbi Rabbi Akovades, what uh, what's the subject of the book? What did you wrote about? And he told me I wrote about the um, holiness of the the of of the soul soul of the Jews and 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 about how above nature uh, um, the contact of a Jew's soul with with God how how what how kind of how unique is the unity between a Jew's soul and the infinite power of God and and, and then I um, he told me I, I wrote about also a few few things it was a few proofs little proofs about uh, Judaism over you know the other religion and I was uh, attacking with uh, some little questions and simple questions Christianity I told him well <laughs> um, and he asked me you know that after that I got a letter from the Pope uh, two weeks after he resigned from his uh, position in, in the Vatican and I'm asking you what do you know? Um, is it because uh, of my letter? Uh, is it uh, ha- that have uh, 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 such a big influence on him? And I told him, Rabbi, I I don't understand in a nistarot in in a secrecy. I'm a very simple man. I don't know what exactly uh, you're doing with your prayers and and uh, you're praying with this. He's praying with the Siddur of Arashash, and, and who knows with the Kavanot and Kabbalah what he have done. But anyways, uh, according to what I know, then I told him this Pope was acting very, uh, very weird for for many years. According to what I know, he told me in what means. Rabbi Yaakov Ades asked me in what means. What do you mean? Um, I told him first of all when he when he uh, resigned and uh, there is a, an article that was published here in Israel that uh, Rabbi uh, Shlomo Amar the uh, Rav Rashi um, uh, spoke about him and he told he said that um, he w- he fought against uh, against um, the people that. Uh, reject the Holocaust that claimed that the Holocaust didn't occur and he also fight anti-Semitism and um, he, he he is well known with his expressions I mean Rabbi Amal says about the Pope that he is well known with his expressions that the Jewish people are our fathers 
and uh, the, they are our old brother and uh, also uh, he is well known but he by his expression that uh, God never abandoned the nation of Israel he didn't he didn't leave the nation of Israel um, so he's well known with it and um, it was an article that was published here in Israel about what uh, what uh, Rabbi Shlomo Amar think about the Pope so he met him he spoke with him and uh, I told him that what I know from what I know uh, that then uh, the Pope um, in, in, uh, in the year 2005 in 19th of August instead of going to the most important ceremony in the Vatican which is the crucifixion of of uh, Yeshu in the Good Friday at that same hour and same time same day, same hour he committed a, a public action uh, and um, in public instead of going there he, he, he dismissed the, the ceremony there he didn't go there uh, and there was no Pope that didn't go ever to such a ceremony. He didn't go in public. And instead, in the same time and hour, he went to a synagogue, Orthodox synagogue in Cologne, Germany, to listen to a lecture of the Orthodox rabbi. Which is weird because it's, uh, it's um, a sin against the the ten command, the first commandment of the of of the uh, um, Catholic uh, uh, rules uh, that the Pope is not allowed to participate or to share or to be part in a Jewish ceremony, and he was, and he was his, its main feature, and basically um, Adler, the Chazan, was giving. Uh, uh, and right after uh, there is a clip that being put in YouTube that the Pope is clapping to what he heard uh, Perk Chazanut of of, uh, of Adler uh, the Ashkenazic uh, Chazan so uh, basically I told him it's, it's a weird thing he committed it in public he didn't go uh, to where he was supposed to but at the same time, in the same hour, he went to a place where he's not supposed to be, according to the rules of uh, the Vatican and, and, and uh, the Catholic uh, faith. So he's not an ordinary pope. He's not another another uh, another uh, uh, another pope in, in in the list. And besides, according to his books, and he wrote twenty four books. He wrote about the Jewish people and their uh, their holy scriptures, and he basically claimed something that no Christian can claim, no um, Catholic believer can claim. He claimed that the Jewish translation to the Bible valid, and uh, meaning that it stand of its own and um, basically to say sh to say such a thing it's um, already <laughs> a rejection of uh, the Christian translation to the Bible that claim that definitely the scripture guided the reader toward Christ and, and basically any one that reject uh, Yeshu, then he doesn't have heaven. But uh, according to to what he says, no, uh, then he claimed that the Jewish translation to the Bible it's valid. It didn't pass away. There is no need, according to that, to a new translation or a new testament because basically it's valid. And um, God uh, never 
left the nation of Israel and the Jewish translation to the Bible it's uh, valid and um, basically since the text is obscure that's what he wrote and the text could be read and we ought to admit as a Christian that uh, it's the Jewish read, uh, reading to the Bible it's a passable one so therefore it's possible not to believe in Yeshua and to have heaven without him because nobody can blame a Jew that doesn't read uh, uh, the Bible the way a Christian does according to what he says because the text is obscure and he doesn't lead or guide necessarily toward, toward Christ, toward, uh, toward uh, Yeshu, because it could be re read the way the Jewish people read it. So therefore, they have their own heaven. Nobody can judge them up there in heaven in the judgment day, according to the Pope, for not believing in Jesus, they have their own heaven and their own, own salvation, their own path. The Jews uh, uh, um, believe it's val valid, and, and basically, we could say that he's he's being blamed for heresy and apostasy toward Christianity. Heresy, rejecting the entire face of Christianity apostasy, uh, rejecting some dogmas of Christianity or kfira uh, v'minut as we say in Hebrew uh, against Christianity so when you, you hear um, that the Pope resigned because he was too old don't believe to it don't believe to the story because all the Popes throughout the history used to die out of alderness, okay? They used to die in the middle of the ceremony out of and if he was sick, no no no, they're always sick and old and they die. So what happened? The the media doesn't tell you exactly the truth. Of course the truth could not be said because otherwise it's an insult to the Vatican. So they will not go public with the real story. They will tell you many things, like pedophilia or whatever. Or he didn't, he didn't like what's going on in the Vatican with the uh, uh, with the uh, unrighteous behavior of whomever. Uh, but that's not exactly the truth. The truth is that he was able to see toward the end of his uh, pos position to recognize Judaism as the right way. So, but you cannot really fire the Pope because by firing the Pope, you're really admitting that the prophecy worth noth nothing because he's not supposed to make any mistake. He is a the representative of Yeshu on earth and he doesn't make any mistakes so therefore they ask him to resign um, so uh, the Vatican will go on with uh, with uh, its, uh, its um, control and uh, whatever of the population without breaking the 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 faith of the multitude, uh, the Christian mul multitude, and the people toward the Vatican. But anyways, I, uh, I, uh, th there is a, a prisoner in Den Haag, Holland, that uh, made a phone call to me, and he asked me to purchase some clothing for the holiday. He made a tshuva in in the prison, and he asked me whether I can buy for him some talit, and so I did. And um, one day he made a phone call to me, and he told me that he put a tefillin, and he started to pray shachrit in his cell, and um, all of a sudden the uh, 
the guard was passing by and he saw him with a tefillin and he called him he wanted to speak with him and then he told me I didn't took uh, took off the tefillin I, I went to speak with him with a tefillin on me and with a talit on me I was in the middle of a prayer and he told me you see that what you have what you have on your head and uh, on your hand and, uh, uh, and that clothing that's the way the Pope was was caught. He, he 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 didn't feel well, and he pressed a button, and his doc and his doctor was not in a didn't come, uh, and there was uh, somebody else, uh, another doctor that came instead, and he saw him with a tefillin, and um, then he basically um, told the story to. He revealed the story that he saw the, the Pope with the Tefillin. Um, I was telling that story uh, here in a, in a little synagogue here in Israel, in a Moroccan synagogue, Moroccan shul. I didn't expect uh, to get a response to to that little story that I that I gave you now, and um, basically what what the prisoner told me that. He told to that to that guard that he doesn't believe him. He told him, "No, you don't." Then hold on. He he went and he called the, this guard called to to the uh, uh, Catholic priest in in the jail to tell to that Jewish prison that uh, the Pope were, was caught with a tefillin on him. Uh, anyways. Um, what I want you to know is when I was saying it a few months ago uh, before the audience in, in, in Moroccan shul, then there was uh, one person there, there Avrech, Talmid Chacham, that his name is Gabai, and he doesn't seem like uh, a Moroccan, but um, he has a blonde hair and a green eyes and uh, very white skin, tall. It looked like a, you know a, um, a European to me, but that's the way I used to to get to know him as a as a gabai. Uh, some Moroccan seems like it, but uh, and he came to me. He approached to me right after the lecture, and he told me, you know, that I'm not exactly a gabai. And I told him, no, no, I don't know. Uh, that you are not Gabai. I, I, we prayed together for a few years, and that's what I know about you. He told me, no, no, I'm a converter from German. Me and my father, we converted uh, from Germany, uh, from uh, German uh, to Judaism, and I'm studying Torah. And um, even my grandfather was in the Second World War. He was in the wrong place. And um, I made a tshuva. I mean, we made we made a, a conversion. Me and my father, and we we studying Torah, Torah all day, and we're trying to be righteous people, you know, righteous Jewish people. He told me, I want you to know that in Poland, the Gentiles have a, a little argument in the popu the population are talking about it. Whether uh, Benedictus the Sixteenth, which is Ratzinger, whether he is a Jew or not, is he go going to go back to his own real identity, Judaism, or not? It's a kind of a rumor or a debate among the population, and I was surprised to hear that because um, I knew one thing: the Pope know enough that even if he made a conclusion that Judaism is the right way but he is a Gentile and he knows that he's not supposed to put a tefillin on his head unless he convert to Judaism so to convert I'm assuming that he didn't convert but maybe he kept for many many years his secrecy right after the second world war trying to not reveal to the population his real identity maybe out of fear just like many 
I basically uh, want you to to know or maybe to add to that story that a few years ago I used to study at uh, Rabbi David Yosef uh, um, in uh, in Harnoff in Jerusalem and my my Chavruta was the son of uh, uh, the Sephardic rabbi of uh, of uh, a French uh, and uh, basically his father came over to visit him and uh, he my friend told me to tell my story in a short way but just to tell him what was my background and and uh, and the rabbi was was listening and he told me um, you know I have a little story to tell you uh, his name the, the name of the rabbi was Rabbi Sitruk uh, if uh, the audience are not familiar with uh, the Sephardic rabbi of uh, French and then uh, used to be uh, the Sephardic rabbi and uh, basically Rabbi Sitruk told me uh, the story uh, he told me that um, Jacques Chirac the president of uh, of French called to all the he called to his Lishka uh, um, a place uh, to all the, all the religious uh, representative all the religion representative in French and uh, he was the one that represent Judaism, and he came over and uh, the commu- Jewish community. He came over to the Lishka or to the place of the president, and um, he saw Lustige. It was many years uh, before uh, Benedict the Sixteenth got his position as a pope. It was uh, during the time of uh, Johann Paul II. And then when he, um, um, Lustiger was uh, the vice pope uh, and, uh, and basically um, when he saw him right before entering to the president, to, uh, to the, to the president he told him, please don't interrupt my, uh, I, I need uh, to ask for the community a few things. For Jewish community, a few things. Don't uh, try to uh, resist uh, or to um, try to avoid uh, uh, to say something bad about the community or that you have a objection. Uh, and uh, he told him, no, don't uh, don't be afraid. I, I remember that my name is. Uh, uh, Aaron uh, uh, Aaron Levy. That's my my name is Aaron Levy. Basically, Lustige. It's not the right name. His right name was uh, Aaron Levy. He is a Jew, uh, but he was a vice pope. He was supposed to be the pope right after John Paul II. But uh, right after John Paul II died, then the they asked him to resign, and they gave him, um, you know, uh, some compensation. Uh, but they couldn't allow a Jewish person to become a pope. Uh, so therefore, he had to resign, and he got uh, some, maybe I don't know, money, but co- compensation for for two weeks be- right. Two weeks before he, get, he was supposed to get his position as a pope, and then um, they uh, basically the Vatican chose Benedict the Sixteenth, thinking that he's not a probably not a Jew or thinking that way. But uh, who knows? And uh, one thing we sure surely know that he come to a conclusion that Judaism. Um, basically stand of its own and uh, the Jewish people doesn't need uh, a Jesus uh, for uh, salvation or whatever and they stand of their own they have their own 
uh, and their translation to the Bible is valid and, and, and all the what I all, what you told you before. But I want to go back to the story. Uh, it Rabbi Sitok told me as I walked to the to the room uh, of the president with all the other representatives. <laughs> then uh, I asked all I all I needed, and and uh, Lustige didn't reject or didn't uh, didn't um, made any comment against uh, my my request. So I got everything I needed for the community and uh, when we left the place then he went to one one way and I w went my way and but I turned to stare at him because it was a weird uh, 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 um, converted to Christianity because uh, uh, usually the missionaries or are <laughs> are the Jewish that converted to 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 Christianity usually they they have a lot of ob objections toward Judaism and they try to show that they are basically reliable to the, to the Gentiles and so I was staring at him and he, all of a sudden he turned and he stared at me and he he smiled to me and I smiled back and then we went to each one of us went to his, his way but a few months after, he got uh, very sick. Lustige got very sick in Rome, and I decided uh, since he he acted weird, not like all the other converted to Christianity, and uh, and he was nice, and uh, and he's a Jew, then maybe I should make a bikur cholim. Should go to the hospital to see him. He's a Jew after all, and then. He went to Rome, and when he walked into the ro room, then all the uh, priests and 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 monks, or whatever, left the place, and and then he he was he was with him along, and he held his head ha ha hand, and he st and Lustige was with the closed eyes, and he started to call him to whisper, Aaron, Aaron. Aaron, wake up. Aaron, wake up. And uh, Lustiger opened his eyes and he stared at Rabbi Sitrok and he was very surprised. And I told him he was surprised what he, he's doing here. And he told, he told him, you're a Jew. It's a Bikur Cholim. <laughs> I'm coming to to visit you. you you're, you're very sick and, and, and uh, I hope you, you're going to be well, but why don't you? You are a Jew. Why don't you say Shema Israel with me? And then uh, um, Lustige asked him to. He started to, was trying uh, hard to say something, and so he uh, Rabbi Sitok was listening, and he said, said he told him that he remembered that right before his parents was taken to I don't know where Auschwitz. During the Second World War, he remember, he recalled that his father was saying with him, Shema Israel. So Rabbi Sitok said, Why don't you say Shema Israel with me together? And Rabbi Sitok started to, to say Shema Israel word by word, and all the three chapters. And, and word by word, uh, uh, Lustige was repeating him word by word. And while he was was telling the story, he was tearing. Rabbi, Rabbi Sitok was, was tearing and he, and he said, I, I told it to, to Rabbi Avadia Yosef and, and, and he started to cry and he said, okay, Tinok Shanishba, Tinok Shanishba. What can we do? He is a Tinoch uh, That's the way he he raised he raised in a very in a Gentile place. He didn't know much about Ju his own Judaism. And then um, Rabbi Sitok, Rabbi Sitok told, told me that uh, um, right after he, he finished, he even made a, a, 
complete Ramach Tevot of Shema Israel. And then he told him, you know that you're a Jew, I hope you're going to going to be well but you know you're very sick if if you die why don't you die as a Jew why don't you ask to to say Kaddish on you and and uh, and basically uh, before all the media of the world even Mabat Lachadashot here in Israel everybody saw that uh, they took the the they uh, said the Aaron uh, of uh, the body of uh, Lustige out of the Vatican, and ten, ten Jewish people said a Kaddish on him, and then they brought him back to the Vatican to be buried. Um, basically, I was telling you that because it's another Ashgacha, another Sipur of Ashgacha of Klal Israel, because you know. There is a culture fight that started between Isa and Jacob from the dawn of human history in the stomach of Rebecca, and 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 basically the 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 the, the culture fight are crossing human history, the entire human history till the end of time. It's a culture fight between Jacob and Esau. And the Bible says, Et Yaakov Avti, Et Esav Saneti. And by the end, by the end of human history, then basically, Vayavek Ish Imo Adolot Shachar, the Ish that will struggle, Jacob will struggle with, will be uh, the angel of of Isa, and that struggle, that culture fight, basically, according to the Bible, saying that when Jacob is rising, then Isa are going uh, going down, and when 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 Isa are climbing, then Jacob are going lower and lower and lower. And it's the fight between Rome and Jerusalem. And if you were searching for a sign, we're searching of, for for a sign of the redemption that coming. So basically, we can, if we can't see it here in Jerusalem, and we we know what's going on here nowadays, and we know that we struggle with, even with our brothers over over, uh, financial situation, then we can see some clues that God gives us according to the Ashgacha, at least in, in, in Rome. So when Rome are going down, when we know that Jerusalem are climbing up. Thank you for listening and good night. We'll meet um, next week on Motzei Shabbos. Uh, thank you for listening. Galei Yerushalayim. Thank you.